Thanks for joining me, this is Danny, and welcome back to my modded 1.11.2 series. This is episode number two, and we're going to be playing with Tinker's Construct today, right here in the garden house. I'm just going to grab one stack, each of these, sand, clay, and gravel, and that's each set of these is going to make two grout, so we're going to get two stacks of grout. And I'm going to just put them in this furnace so that they can cook while we're doing other stuff. <laughs> so... The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of, oh, I'm not going to be able to make a bunch with the resources I have right here. I'm going to make a bunch of these blank patterns, about that many. So the goal today is to, um, well, one of my end goals <laughs> is to take down this big cluster of trees over here. I made kind of a tree farm. Um, I just put a bunch of saplings together and I don't want to have to cut that down manually. So by the end of this episode, we're going to have a lumber axe that's going to take this whole thing down in like one swing well one set of swings anyway so that's gonna be that's gonna be one of our end goals but um, we're also gonna work on getting some basic tools and weapons to replace our sword and our pickaxe we'll get a much nicer pickaxe and sword than what we've got and we're going to replace all three of these with a single <laughs> item which we will see in a bit um, so to get started with that, first we need to make all of our little tool um, benches. So, whoops. So I'm going to make a part builder. Actually, let's just put that there. I'm going to make a stencil table. I'm going to make a pattern chest. In fact, I think I'm going to make two of them. And we'll use one to hold patterns and one to hold casts. A tool station. That is going to be a crafting table and a pattern okay so that's enough to get us started Put a pattern chest in between the part builder and the stencil table so that way we can access the patterns in the pattern chest from both of so there's our tinker setup so we can just click on this crafting station and that'll give us access to all the other things but meanwhile we've got our grout going on in here, actually, I have some speed upgrades I'm going to throw in here so that this goes a little faster, but it's also going to be less efficient with fuel, so I'm going to throw some more fuel in that chest. So we're going to take our grout, and we're going to make a bunch of things for our smeltery. We'll just make the smeltery right away, because I'm going to be wanting to make metal tools right, off, right from the beginning. So we're going to need a smeltery controller. We're going to need... Um, let's do two smeltery drains. I guess we're going to make two smeltery faucets. We're going to make a casting table and a casting basin. Sure. And we're going to need some glass to make a seared tank, which we're going to bring down in the mines with us and fill with lava. And then we'll just do a bunch of seared bricks, which we're going to need seared bricks for. <laughs> we're going to need seared bricks to make seared bricks. So we'll start with 10. Okay, that'll be enough for now. That'll get us started. So we're going to start with a 2x2, two two, which will be a fairly small smeltery, but it'll get us started. Down there. I'm going to put two there. Put those there. We're going to put the smeltery controller here. And... Wait, well, I changed my mind. <laughs> We're going to do a 3x3, three three, a little bit larger smeltery that will have more um, capacity. And then we won't have to make it quite as tall, so it won't block my window. It won't block our view as much, um, but we probably we probably will end up making it taller. But this will give us nine slots um, to drop stuff in, ten buckets worth. So, yeah, that's going to be more than enough because we're really just going to be using this for tool forging. We're not going to be using it for, like, ore doubling or anything like that. Uh... Okay, so now we're going to put our faucets on the front of the drains, and we can actually put a faucet on this side too, so I really only needed one drain. Um, but if we ever want to add more tables and drains, we can put another one here and another one over there. Um, you know what? It might not be a bad idea for us to just do that. Do it just there, starting off. Then it won't be blocking the like pathway over here. Let's try that. Let me see how that looks. So if we put... Casting table there, and put a casting basin over here. Yeah, that could work. I like that. Cool. And we can see we did it right because our 
thing is all lit up here. Um, but I'm going to take this tank and I'm going to go down into the mines and grab some lava. Alright, this guy is full and it does retain its inventory so we can pick it up. And if we look at it, we can see it has four millibuckets, or 4,000 millibuckets of lava. There, hooray! So now we look in here, we see we're full of lava. Yay, now we can get started. So why don't we start with a pick? And I'm pretty sure that I want to start with a bronze pick. So I'm going to start smelting the alloys because they take a while and then we can be putting our tool parts together while we're waiting for the alloys to smelt. Um, so to make bronze, we need three copper and one tin. Now when we put ores in our smeltery, it doubles them. So each ore is worth two. So if we put, let's say, four copper in here, um, we're, all, then, we're then gonna want to put, that's gonna be eight copper. Um, so then we're going to put two, <laughs> let's take one of those out. So th three copper ore and two tin should make eight bronze. So you can see it's kind of making it <laughs> over time. Eight ingots of bronze, hooray! Which we'll be using very shortly. And then we're also gonna need some something to make casts with. We can either just use gold or we can use aluminum brass, which does not exist in this pack because we have no aluminum in this We're gonna pack. need two ingots of gold for every cast that we're gonna wanna make. And we're probably gonna want to make, oh, I don't know, we're gonna make a few of them. So let's put like, Let's put like six ingots of gold in there. Or we could put three, oh actually, you know what? We could have put three gold. <laughs> That's why I kept that gold ore in there. We need a tool rod, a pickaxe head, and a binding. So, oh actually, we don't have to go in between them. We've got these handy little tabs on the top. So we go over to the stencil table and we put a bunch of stencils in there. And we get a pickaxe. I'm just gonna shift click it and it'll pop it into our pattern chest, which means that when we go over to the part builder, we'll have access to it right here. So stencil table, we're also going to need a tool rod pattern and a binding. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our part crafter and we're gonna decide what parts we're gonna make these out of. We're going to make the binding out of paper. The binding cost, the material cost is one, so we're actually gonna need one more. Because each paper <laughs> just gives us one quarter of a part basically. So like one piece of paper is like one piece of, I mean, is like a quarter of a piece of wood or whatever. Um, nope, I don't want the rod to be a band out of paper. I want the binding out of paper. So there's our, there's our binding. The rod I want to make out of wood. Um, and the reason I want to make it out of wood is because that gives us ecological, um, which will auto repair the tool. Now later on, we're going to swap that out for something different, like later on in the game when we start getting into some better materials. For the pickaxe head, we're going to be make, we're going to be using bronze. The material cost of two, so first we're going to have to grab two cobble and make a stone one, a stone pickaxe head, and then we're going to come out here, oh, um, put that in our casting table, and we're going to make a cast out of gold. And that's actually going to consume the piece, the uh, stone. So there we go, there's our cast. So we can pick up the cast and we can see it has a material cost of two, just like the other thing. And then we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put bronze on the bottom and we're gonna make ourselves a bronze pickaxe head. And I'm going to put this pattern chest right there. And this crafting table there, sure, why not? Hooray! And then we can throw this in the pattern chest, which you can see, it was a pattern chest, we put the cast in it, it is now a cast chest, which means we cannot put patterns in here, we can only put casts in it, you can do one or the other. Now we go back in our tool station, and we're going to say pick, and we're going to shift click these bits, and there's our pickaxe. So what do we got? We have a durability of 470, which is okay, um, compared to a diamond pick, it's like half, so it's, <laughs> it's not very good compared to diamond pick, but we can make it better. Um, a mining speed of 6.8, um, I don't know how that compares to a, a diamond pick, but we can make it faster, attack 4.5, so it's not quite as good as a diamond, and modifier is 4, so the paper binding gave us the extra modifier, so let's do this. Hooray, hey, there was no noise. So if we compare this to a diamond pick, we'll probably find that it isn't really that much better, so... Um, So here, well, whatever. Here's our uh, our pick. 
and there's a diamond pick. So they're almost <laughs> very similar. Diamond pick, a bronze pick. Okay, so so big deal, right? Now we get to add modifiers. Modifiers. So these are all the different modifiers we can add. Haste, luck, sharpness, diamond, um, which adds durability and it also raises the mining level. Emerald, fortified, silk touched, reinforced, beheading, smite, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I want haste, obviously, and that's going to be redstone, as you can see. Um, I would also like a little bit of luck, so I'm probably going to use one of the modifiers for luck. Stick this in here and we can see... Let's grab a stack of regular redstone too. That, when we add 50 redstone to it, we get our first level of haste, which brings our mining speed up to 13.17. So like we went from 6.8 <laughs> to 13.17. Nice. That's one of our modifiers. So let's just just for fun. Let's compare it again to our diamond pick. So here's our diamond pick, and here's our bronze. Okay, definitely faster. Hooray! But that's not all. Let's do that again. So this will bring us up to 100 and a mining speed of 18.59. Okay. <laughs> nice. So definitely faster than our diamond pick. Plus, it's repairable. So, I mean, it's more easily repairable. We can just use bronze to repair it. We don't have to use diamonds. Or XP. Luck one. Ta-da! Okay, you know what? Um, I'm actually going to add another speed to this. Because... Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're, we're using almost all our redstone. Because we can add more modifiers later. That's right. We have... We have Tinker's Extras installed in this pack. So that'll bring our mining speed up to 22.95. And that will be all of our modifiers. Okay, diamond pick. Our bronze pick. <laughs> nice! Hooray! We have a fast pick! Check this out. <laughs> a possibly little known fact about Tinker's Tools. I have a pickaxe in my hand. I have a stone shovel in my other hand. If I go to break some stone, it uses the pick, right? If I go to break some dirt, it uses the shovel. And I'm just left clicking. Oh, whoops. Nice. That is so cool. Here's the quick and dirty on melee weapons in Tinkers. We've got a broadsword, which is essentially like a vanilla sword. It's got the same attack speed, 1.6, and comparable damage. But of course, it's upgradable and everything else, and repairable and all that. The longsword has higher damage, but it's a little bit slower. I can't remember what the speed is exactly. It is 1.4 as opposed to 1.6. So it's a little bit slower, but it does more damage. And then the rapier is fast but it does very little damage. So here's a rapier, we've got three attack speed. I mean, that's like, like this thing, 0.6. You see how long it takes for that to come back up? Double that, that's gonna be your rapier. You're gonna be coming up about that fast. <laughs> that is what we're gonna make. That's gonna be our first weapon. Um, and the reason I've decided to make that is because um, when you're killing mobs, most mobs that we're gonna be dealing with in the, in the overworld, at least early in the game, have 10 hearts, 20 health points. Um, so, if you have a sword that has less than 10, like this thing, you've got to hit it three times. Actually, with this yeah, with this one you'd have to hit it three times. So if we made, for instance, the Manulin Rapier, 5.8 attack damage, we'd still have to hit it about three times. Now, if we can get 10, if we can get up to 10 attack damage, then we can two hit any mob, right? And it doesn't matter whether you have 10, 11, or 19 <laughs> attack damage, you're still going to two hit every mob. It's still going to require two hits to kill a mob. So if we can get 10 attack damage, um, that's about as good as we're going to get unless we can get to 20, um, which we will later. But not, <laughs> but not with any of these weapons. None of these will get us to 20 attack damage. What will get us to 20 is the cleaver. And we'll be playing around with that later. But for now, um, I'm going to do a rapier 
I'm going to do the manual and rape here, and we're going to tweak a few things. You can see that the uh, attack damage is 5.8. We're going to get it up to 10, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll show you how. But first, we're going to have to go to the nether, and we're going to have to get some cobalt and ardite in order to make manulin. Um, but we can't do that with this because it has a mining level of diamond. So what are we going to do? Well, <laughs> we are going to make ourselves a sharpening kit with obsidian because that's probably the cheapest sharpening kit that would allow us to um, do those things. So that's going to allow us to do cobalt and ardite. <clears throat> because cobalt and ardite is even higher than diamond, so we couldn't even use a, a diamond pick for that. So I'm going to put some obsidian on, in the smeltery drain. So now if we look in here, we can see we've got <laughs> obsidian. I'm going to put water... Er, glob... <laughs> I'm going to put lava in the smeltery drain. You have to click on the drain, not on the faucet, not on the smeltery controller, but on the drain, and that puts it inside. So now we have lava inside our smeltery. And then I'm going to grab a bucket of water. I'm going to put that inside the smeltery. And guess what that's going to make? Obsidian, hooray! So now we have one block of obsidian in there. Um, and then we are going to make a cast for a sharpening kit. So first we have to go to our stencil table and we have to click on the sharpening kit pattern and then we have to make wait what was the uh, material cost on that two so then we have to grab our two stones uh, now I have 22 <laughs> and make our stone sharpening kit which obviously isn't going to help much that would bring our mining level to stone which would be a huge downgrade <laughs> so we're going to put it in here we're going to grab our gold put that on the bottom and make our cast. And in the meantime, we're gonna need some flint. I think just one flint, or is it two? It might be two, I can't remember. I think it's just one. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our obsidian, put that on the bottom, and one block I believe is two, so this should be just enough, because the material cost was two, and it's the same for the cast as it would be for the, uh, yeah, that used all our obsidian. There we go. Okay. So there's our obsidian sharpening kit. We take that guy, we put it in our tool forge with our tool and that and some and one piece of flint. And you can see whoops, our mining level is now cobalt. We went from diamond to cobalt. Hooray! Because we're fortified with obsidian. Ta-da! The other thing you can do with the sharpening kits is we can make a bronze sharpening kit and use it to repair our pick. Here's the ultimate test, breaking obsidian. <laughs> Actually, not too bad. And here's the proof that we can break cobalt and ardite with our bronze pick. Hooray! I feel like the days where you had to run around the nether forever to get like one piece of cobalt <laughs> are over. And look at that, three of them right in that little area. I've got 40, whoa, <laughs> 49 of each. Of course, I've been here for quite a while, as you can see by the nether quartz, but <laughs> I'm almost having a hard time finding nether quartz than Ardite, because I want several stacks of nether quartz. But I think I've got enough. I think I've got enough of everything now. But yeah, it's taken a while. Because there's so much tainted soil around, it seems like there's not quite as much nether quartz as there would otherwise be. But that's fine. We got enough. Um, maybe I want more... No, we probably have enough glowstone, too. <laughs> but this stuff is just everywhere. It's like, it's not... It seems like it's not nearly as rare as it used to be. Which is kind of nice. Also use them to repair your tools. Look at that. That was a bronze sharpening kit. Basically two pieces of bronze, and it fully repaired my pick from being almost completely dead. I'm trying to get to the portal now. I, <laughs> I can see where it is, but I can't figure out how to get there. Wow. <laughs> I got exactly a stack of each. I think that's a good time to stop. <laughs> I keep <laughs> I keep seeing it and then like, oh, I might as well. But no, let's just go. Let's just get home. This is really close to the portal anyway, so we can easily come back here and get that stuff. We'll be able to make two stacks of manulin. We need a tool rod, a sword blade, and a cross guard. The sword blade is what we're going to make of manulin. Um, so let's go to our stencil table and get the sword blade pattern. And go. And that has a material cost of two. So 
So there's our sword blade. When you make manulin, one plus one equals one. In this case, it's actually gonna give us two because each ore gives us two. So <laughs> two cobalt, two ardite is gonna give us two manulin, which is gonna be enough. Um, I'm just gonna throw a couple more in there because why not? Because we'll use it for repairing and stuff and maybe even for some other tools. Um, so we're going to get our gold down there and our stone blade and make our cast. Throw that cast in the cast chest. And this may take a while. These are a little slower. Um, so while we're waiting for those, I'm going to grab tool rod, material cost one. We're going to need one bone. We are going to make a bone handle, which is going to give us a little bit of extra damage because it's got the fractured property. And the guard, you might be able to guess, we're going to make that out of paper. We have to make it out of paper because that's going to give us just enough modifiers in order for us to um, get to the magic number 10 that we want. That, okay. So, so far we have a paper guard and a bone tool rod. And our manual is ready. So we used two ingots, we have four left. As you saw, we had six in the beginning. And there it is. It's so shiny and pretty. So if we look, if we look under JEI, our rip here, we can see that if we made this thing entirely out of manulin, we would have an attack damage of 5.8. And that is the highest we can get from any like single material. Like if you look at all these, that's the highest damage. However, <laughs> because we're using the bone, with the manual and sword blade, you can see our attack is 6.62, and we have four modifiers, which we're going to be using all of for one purpose. Nope. For one purpose, and that is for nether quartz. So you can see we're up to sharpness one that gives us up to 7.73 we have four modifiers rem remember that and then now we have three remaining now we're up to 8.63 now we're up to 9.51 so you can see this is why we needed the extra modifier we only have one modifier left and we're not quite at 10 so if we stopped here if we didn't have that extra modifier we wouldn't be able to two hit mobs we'd have to three hit them um oh <laughs> i thought we were out of quartz okay and there we have it, 10.36. Uh, and check out how fast this is. Look at that. Compared to our diamond sword, that's how slow our diamond sword is. <laughs> nice. That is awesome. Plus, it has armor piercing. I didn't mention that before. It has armor piercing as well. And we're going to keep this in here. We're going to use that with blood magic later um, in order to make a bound sword. Because <laughs> that's... Nice. Now, uh, now I want to kill stuff. Crap. I wasn't recording, but I, I just killed a baby zombie with two, two very quick hits. Look at that. I've even found that I can kill creepers with this thing without having to back up at all, because I can hit them fast enough that that I can hit them twice before they blow up, even if I don't back away. Let's see if we can find one to demonstrate with. Let's see if we can rush this skeleton. Oh, we can't because this this guy's in the way. Ah! Yeah, this is a nice weapon. I've never made one of these before. This is the first time I've made one. Oh, holy crap. Nice. Oh, there's a creeper. So let's see, how fast can we do this? One, two, one, two. Let's remember that speed. One, two. See? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. Oh, Wither Witch. Yep, I'm pretty happy with this. 
Oh, it has one more feature too that I didn't mention, and that is when you right click, you jump back. Now I want to make a lumber axe, but if we look in here, we can see that there is no lumber axe. Why not? Because we need a tool forge. This is the first tier. This is our first tier tool station, basically. So we need to take our tool station, and we need some seared bricks. We need 12 of them. <laughs> so that actually works out pretty nicely, because we need three of the brick bricks. And then we need four blocks of some kind of metal. Um, we could do lead because we hardly ever use it, or we could do iron because we have so much. Um, so we're going to need 36. Let's let's do lead. It's going to be a while before we need lead, and when we do, we'll have plenty. I'm sure. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, Four blocks of lead, like that. We take our tool station, put it in the middle, and then we make the legs out of lead, and there we have it, our tool forge. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> now we have a lot more options. So inclu including the hammer and the excavator, which we're going to make at some point too, although we might not get around to that today. Um, but for our lumber axe, we're going to need a tough tool rod, a broad axe head, a large plate, and a tough binding. So we need a large plate, the tough binding. So this is different than the other binding that we used before. And then we also have the tough tool rod, which is also different than the regular tool rod. Where's the ax head? That's right here, broad hack. And I've smelted all the materials that we're gonna use. We're actually gonna use three different metals. We're gonna use some copper, we're gonna use iron, and we're going to use cobalt. Um, cobalt is gonna give us the best speed for the axe head, and that requires eight. Binding, we're going to make that out of copper so that we can get extra XP. <laughs> and, because why not? This we're actually going to make out of wood so that we get ecological, so that it repairs itself. And then the plate we're going to make out of iron so that we get magnetic. Yay! So that way when we cut down the trees, all of the uh, materials will come toward us. The lumber axe is not something we're going to be using very frequently, which is one of the reasons why I, I want to do the wooden handle, because it'll slowly repair itself and we'll probably never have to repair it. Ta-da! So mining speed 3.15, which isn't terribly fast, so we're probably going to want to put some redstone on this. But if we look at all the other lumber axes... Um, 4.2. Oh, what's slowing us? Something is slowing us down. Oh, because we don't, because we're not making the whole thing out of cobalt. But compared to even manulin is slower, and manulin is the second fastest, so that's 2.46. So this is probably going to be the fastest that we're going to be able to get with all the materials that I wanted, unless we do it all with cobalt. But there's that. Now let's just chop down one tree. Let's not chop down the really big one yet. Um, just to kind of see how fast it is. Okay, so it's it's okay. <laughs> it's not terribly fast. But considering that it's chopping down an entire tree, that's, you know, it doesn't have to be terribly fast. But we can make it a little bit faster. Five point two six. Oh yeah, that's that's actually quite a bit faster. Um, should we do another one? There's not really any other modifiers I really want to do with this thing. Okay, so we're going from 5.26 to 7.02. Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go mining for redstone because we only have like 46 redstone left. So let's try this one now. Yeah, that's nice. Hooray! Now, the fun one. Oh, did you see that I just got XP for that? Because I have copper in here. <laughs> awesome! Uh oh, it missed... It missed one. It must have thought it was part of that tree. One more thing I want to do with Tinker's Construct, and that is... I want to go find an island. <laughs> a slime island. I haven't found one yet. Um, and I did actually turn down the spawning of, of slime islands in this world, or in this pack. Um, because they usually spawn way, way too much. And I think they're 
not all that nice looking. <laughs> I think they like just disrupt the landscape in Minecraft. I think they they should be rare. I think it makes more sense that they're rare. Um, but it also means that it's going to be a little harder for us to find one. All right, I'm going to try this. My first Enderman of the game <laughs> today. I mean, of this world. Oh, crap. Oh, don't go away. Oh, there you are. Get over here. Oh, crap, crap. There we go. And I got an Ender Pearl. Yay! So I finally found a slime island. It's taken a really long time. I've done quite a bit of traveling as you can see i think i might need to make some adjustments to the configs um yeah i mean they i found three of them right in this area but yeah they're uh they're extremely rare now and i think they should be rare but maybe not quite this rare this is a really really long way up <laughs> and of course i don't have any fall protection or flight or anything so it's a little a little scary. Yay, we made it! <laughs> There's no trees up here. Hmm, that was one of the things I wanted, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need trees at the moment. Um, there's none on that one either. That's interesting. Oh, there's one over there. It would be kind of tough to get over there, but maybe, maybe in a bit. Um, but one of the things I really wanted, one of the main things I wanted up here is this stuff. This congealed purple slime. Well, congealed slime in general. So the main reason I took this trip is to do some early game travel <laughs> with... Oh. I forgot to bring... Oh, crap. I had string. <laughs> I had string in my inventory and I went back home because I had so much stuff and dropped a bunch of stuff off and I dropped off the string. So I guess I'm not going to make the slime sling yet. Um... But we'll make that very shortly. When I get down to the bottom, I'll look for some flax. But because we're going to make a slime sling, there's one other item that we're definitely going to want to make. While we're up here getting our congealed slime. And that is slime boots. <laughs> slime boots. Which are basically going to give us complete fall protection. And it's also going to let us like bounce around. So they're fun and practical. <laughs> Get some race slime balls, which I probably didn't need to bring since we got plenty of slime. But we are going to lose our, a little bit of armor protection because we're losing our iron boots. And now we got slime boots. Hooray! Right, are we ready? Maybe we should move away from that lava pit. <laughs> Here we go. Whee! <laughs> ah, nice. I oh, <laughs> I love slime boots. Awesome. So we have full fall protection now. We never have to worry about taking any fall damage as long as we have these boots on. Very nice. I got some string from a flax plant. And actually a spider too, I think. Hey. <laughs> That's my boat, squid. Yay, we have a slime sling and slime boots. Now it's gonna we're gonna get home a little faster than how we got here. Ready? So I'm going to kind of point my back toward the home, or toward the direction of home. I'm going to point eh, maybe about three blocks. Actually, let's go up here where there's not so much grass, and it's up a little higher. Maybe about three blocks away, and... Whee! <laughs> nice! Oh, that is so awesome for early game. <laughs> oh, oh, don't fall on the quicksand! Okay. <laughs> Holy crap. Some speedy travel. Oh, and if you hold shift, you do stop bouncing, but you also take fall damage. So depending on how far you fall, you're basically, when you hold shift, you're basically turning off the slime boots. Home sweet home! We're back. In the next episode, we're going to be playing with some actually additions and getting started with RF generation and some farming and some other fun stuff and tools and crazy stuff. So I do hope you join me for that. Of course, if you do have any questions or comments about Tinker's Construct, about anything we did today, or about whatever stuff we didn't do today, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button, and to join me next time. Thanks for watching.